Let's mow in the Central Committee. Let's cringe in the Central Committee. Let's bog in the Central Committee right now. Can you check out this White House housing discrimination CBS news clip? Why not? Dude? Back now at 730 and the White House said this week it supports the study of reparations for black Americans. In Congress, H.R. 40, that's a bill, would examine the history of slavery and discriminatory government policies and suggest ways to address inequality. Consider this, the typical white household has about 10 times the accumulated wealth of the typical black household. It's an issue we began looking into last summer on the campaign trail and we found what many scholars say is the root of this racial wealth gap. It's not entirely in slavery or some century-old wrong, but in fact in the modern suburbs, and it touches on my own family's history. In 1953, my grandfather, Rudy DeCopel, became a homeowner, moving my grandmother and three kids, including my dad, out of a tiny apartment in Manhattan and into a new house in Lynnhurst, New Jersey, one of America's growing suburbs. After World War II, millions of families made a similar move. Families are pursuing the American dream to give their children a better chance in life. A lot of them were masons, hmm. carpenters, farmers. Working class. Working class. Proudly so. Definitely. Bob Jangeruso is the mayor of Lynnhurst and a lifelong resident. We had great childhood here. It's priceless. One of the best places you could ever imagine to grow up. And Joe Caffone, a retired police officer, is an unofficial town historian. It sounds like a classic American suburb. That's it. That's exactly. That, that's a that's a really good. Word I can't place. wait until they ask about the black people to the former cop. Oh, this is this is going to be good. But America's suburbs have another story, less often told, about who was able to buy these homes and benefit from that boom time economy, and who was not. It's just a remarkable record of exclusion. David Trout is a law professor at Rutgers University, Newark. It is not accidental, and it is not just a, a question of bad attitudes. It's a question about inequitable rules. From the 1930s to the 1960s, the major federal programs that developed the Thank suburbs you, and guaranteed Two months. mortgages Thank you. were for whites only, first as a matter of policy and later in practice. Redlining, for example, is a term that comes from these 1940s-era maps adopted by the Federal Housing Authority. Green, blue, and yellow areas were typically eligible for government-backed loans and investment. The red areas were not, leaving them starved for resources. And as I look back at Lynnhurst and the surrounding county, where my great-grandparents also owned a home, I noticed those redlined areas had a lot in common. They were anywhere from 45% to 95% Negro, the term used. Some had wells spoiled by typhoid. Some did not have city gas or utilities going to all the properties. Some were divided off by a railroad line or an elevated train, so physical segregation in addition to everything else. Any of that surprise you? Not at all. In fact, you can multiply those findings across the country. Those who were fortunate enough to enjoy the largesse of this government were able to see benefits accrue over generations, which they could then share with their children and their grandchildren. And so to be left out of that process of household wealth accumulation has been devastating for black families. By 1950, about half the new home purchases in America were made with government-backed loans. But 98% of them went to white buyers. So there you have it. The great American white middle class, they did it with government welfare. Every single one of you white motherfuckers who think, oh, you know, uh, my family pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps. Actually, what happened is they were handed government money. Otherwise, they would have never been able to afford those loans or qualify for those loans. And among veterans like my grandfather in the lucrative New York, New Jersey area, it was more than 99%. It's an uncomfortable fact that families like mine are only just beginning to face. Wait a minute, you're telling me they were only gonna mortgage white people? Yeah, yeah. For you to say that Lynnhurst is the way it is because it almost implies that Lynnhurst was racist. No, this is my family too, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying okay. that we, I'm saying we had no idea. Oh, okay, dude. Now we're whitewashing.
Now we're lying. And yes, cop, Linhurst was racist. Okay, you know that now. Now you can't look down on black people that don't own their own home because they were not allowed to. What are you going to do about it? Right. Most people would not have known that the federal government had this program in place. A lot of what? people did not know. But a lot of people, what? Lee Porter among them, were personally, physically aware that racist policies prevented black families from moving into... He literally took it as a personal slight to say a town was racist. And first of all, they did know because they were getting government loans. You don't think they knew it was a government loan? Desired neighborhood. Government back I didn't loan. call it redlining, but yeah, that's what it was. What did you call it? We call it, this is the area that um, uh, persons of color can live. At 94 years old, Porter still runs the Fair Housing Council of Bergen County. You've been called the mother of fair housing in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know how that happened. She's been here since the 1960s when she and her husband were blocked from buying homes they could afford. How did you feel when you found out that real estate agents were steering you away from the White Houses? I was quite angry about it, but I was persistent. I was, um, I was determined to get what I wanted, the same as anybody else. Quite angry sounds like an understatement. <laughs> uh, we managed, we did okay. But black families who couldn't own those nicer homes have not been able to build the same wealth over time. Many Americans, me included, are only just now coming to terms with how big a role our federal government had in enforcing discrimination. The question now is, what are we going to do about it? The one thing that I'm struggling with, and this is as, as somebody whose family came through here, is when I looked at the old maps, just over the river, the areas were redlined by the federal government meaning they weren't worthy of mortgages. And Lynnhurst wasn't redlined. What do you do with that knowledge? You move on. Come on, it's all God's people. <laughs> now that we do that. <laughs> right. What do we do about it? You know, that's a good question. I don't have the answer to that, Tony. I wish I did. That's a very honest answer, too. What yeah. are we going to do about it? That's jaw-dropping to me. 98%? Yeah, 99 in, in this area. Went to white families? 99. If, so it begins the wealth gap. That is the origin of the racial wealth gap in this country. This yeah. is where history shows yes. up in your wallet. Yes. And, uh, you know, Bob and Joe, who I appreciate having a very difficult and uncomfortable conversation with me, too. they're representative of where most white Americans are today. 80 yep. or 90 percent don't know what to do about it or think we should just start today and be better in the future. Well, you know, I did get a house, so we should just move on. It's a clean slate from here. Yeah, up. It's yeah, like you start, yeah. it's like okay, we've been running a race, yes. and now we're gonna follow the rules of the race. But don't worry about the head start. Yes. Yeah, it's that a real di dilemma because it because it compounded as you as you point out in the piece over generations. Yes. It, it's it's not just one family lost opportunity that goes on to their, about to their descendants it. and the descendants after them, and it's gone on you know for decades and continues. Your yep. professor said it right: a remarkable record of exclusion. But can we just take a moment to acknowledge Lee Porter? I bow down to her. What a class, class act. She is the, is the, is the woman who and got Corey, Senator Cory Booker's family was in Bergen County and got in through her work. I yeah. didn't know it was her. Yeah. yeah. So. I grew up in this piece. county. Let's Thank say it's you. very white and very affluent. Piece, Tony, yeah, also. because of government loans, Skeeter. That's how it got that way. Government what are we money. Do about it? The White House is asking Americans to consider it, mm -hmm. to study right. it. I got to admit, seeing white men talk like this is surprising to me personally. Welcome to uh, things are happening, chat. Things are happening. We're we're working on it. We're working our best. We're working. We're working. They even had an expression back then. I'm free. I'm white and 21. Wow, interesting. Ah, uh, for local media, that's one of the most base stories I've ever seen. It was pretty good. It was still funny to watch the white people go like. Well, you know, uh, what can we do? You know, we can just move on. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What do you say we all move on? We just, uh, we're all just gonna move on. We're all just gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna move on. We don't need to pay attention to any of this. Uh, just, just, just move on. 
I think you underrate a bit how strong the bubble of ignorance is around a lot of these suburban white people. I've met a lot of staggeringly naive people with no clue from that kind of background. Well, that is intentionally manufactured and engineered. They create that naivete. That's a shield from accountability. If everyone is ignorant of the evil is being done, well, how can I be? Well, uh, oh, it's been manufactured, but they know. White people know. They know. It's just not polite to say it. You'll say that it's a dangerous neighborhood, you know? That's the type of stuff you'll say, okay? They absolutely know. Don't let the bullshit, don't let the bullshit trick you, okay? Some of them are, we'll say, urban, but most people have caught on to the, to the urban, uh, the urban thing. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. If you want more leftists on this platform and other platforms that actually go into deep dives about issues like finance and electoral politics, you're never gonna find a better stream than this one. Here's some things you can do. I'm posted YouTube content constantly. We had another Jimmy Dore video. We had a not safe, not safe for stream debate with conservatives where Vosh and I and Denims debated with a bunch of conservatives about voter fraud. You have the dumbass takes of uniting with fascists. Get in there. Get in there.